I recognized when I started talking about that subject, a, bit, a willingness to be honest, that it doesn't bring up all the best stuff about us. I'm just going to be on, uh, I'll be that blunt about it. And I've seen a lot of things in myself over the last couple of weeks that were there. In fact, there was one thing that I repented of with my wife yesterday where I, I, I told her, I recognize that I've actually had this, this thing with me ever since I was young. But what happened is at some juncture of my life, I decided to turn it off. And so I, I found a way to escape the consequences of it without actually dealing with the issue. So I learned how to, to fabricate to avoid an unpleasant part of my personality, so to speak, right? Quote, unquote, personality. It was something, it was a defect, but it was something I, I hid. But there was something that, that I was talking to somebody re- uh, this week. It was just came up in conversation. Somebody just asked me a question. And in that conversation, I said something that, that I've actually perceived before. And it was really interesting to find a scripture that helped me to, to solidify this. So I'm going to read the scripture, then I'll explain what, what, what I saw, because it's clearly defined in scripture. It is in Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 3. It's very interesting the way that this is, I'll just read from verse 1, but it's very interesting to see what happens. This was Jesus in a synagogue. It says, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there, which had a withered hand, and they washed him where they would heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. So their whole purpose was to accuse him, right? The Pharisees were out trying to just trip him up. However they can, could, could get to him, they wanted to. And he said unto the man that had, a, had the withered hand, stand forth, and he said unto him, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil or uh, to save life or, or to kill? But they held their peace. Now, here's where this gets very interesting is verse 5. This does not indicate that Jesus had an evil spirit, but he was actually angry. Verse 5, and when he looked round about on them with anger. Now, here's what's very important about why there was anger there. Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. And I looked it up and it says passively, it's sorrow, sadness. Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth your hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the others. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. And I could keep going, but here's what I really wanted to focus on was verse 5, because this is something I perceived in my own journey that may help you, because I don't know, just based upon a lot of the diseases of people, whether they're here or they're elsewhere. It indicates that I wish we could avoid offense. I think it's more that we have to deal with the fact it's already here. I wish it was such a thing that we don't have it. I just think we cope with it. But might I suggest there's a reason why we cope with it? is I believe that really there are only three basic emotions that I I see most people manifest. It's either being fearful or stressed, happy, but like kind of a weird happy, and angry. But there's a component that I think that I've started to just apply recently, like literally within the last three or four days to a week, where I, I had been doing it for a little while, but I'm starting to be more consistent with it, is to admit to myself when a situation is grievous. Rather than being angry, maybe we're grieved. And the situation isn't good. I believe that one of the most amazing things that Pastor Henry did sometimes was he would weep with people. But I think sometimes when he wept, it wasn't just that his tears healed them because. He was crying and he had compassion on them, but he was letting them know that what they were going through wasn't good. But if it's normal to you, you don't know it's not good. There, see, there are a lot of people that I grew up with, and I, I know that people don't know me. I, I don't say, here's where I'm from. But you know, I came from Los Angeles. I, I rubbed elbows with a lot of people, most of them not the upper crust. And underneath a lot of the behaviors that I found when I would come across people who were, shall I'll use diplomatic term, involved in a very uh, 
illegal lifestyle. I'll, I'll, I'll use that, right? Doing things that were oftentimes violent and otherwise. When, you, when I would talk to them, they would sometimes tell me about things that were normal to them. But if you're really honest with yourself, this should never be normal to any human. The reason it was normal to them was because nobody told them otherwise. But more than being angry, they were sad. They just were never told, you could be sad about this. It's sad that you've lost half your friends because of violence. That's sad. It's not normal, it's sad. I'm just wondering if a lot of us have experienced a lot of things. Even right now, we're going through situations that are grievous. On various levels, we're grieved. It's not perfect. It's not great. But we have to say, this is grievous. It's sad. But then here's what we can do with that is now release it to God. We don't have to be consternating about, if only I can change this and it's not a bad thing anymore. But see, that's how I think we also get offended with it because we're trying to change it. We think we have to get rid of it versus just, Jesus was grieved with, with their hardness of heart, but he didn't do anything to them. He just said, that's unfortunate. And then he had to escape, All right? Because he did. He had to make his escape. And he also helped, helped that man. But I do believe there's an element here that sometimes, can, can we add the element of grief into ungodly situations or just unfortunate situations? I think that's what, what we refer to as the catch-22 kind of situation we might live in. You know, the, the one where you feel like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Well, maybe you need to say, this is a grievous situation, Father. Then release it to Him. It's having said that and being honest with yourself. And then trusting Him to work it out. But I just thought that that might help you because I think the problem is we just get used to being offended about things because... We don't realize that we can be grieved about things.